for joining me today. Um, as we begin, do you think that you could just introduce yourself um, and just give a brief description about, you know, what branch you were in uh, going into the military? Okay, my name is Bob Mastriani. I was in the United States Navy. I was a second class petty officer aboard the USS John F. Kennedy. Thanks. Um, so why did you pick the Navy? What about that branch was uh, important to you? Um, my father was in the Navy, so, and I seen a commercial on TV, it said, see the world, so I jumped on it. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about seeing the world? I know that the Navy has a really big appeal because you're able to travel. Um, what sort of places did you travel? Um, Spain, Italy, France, Israel. Um, got to see a lot of, you know, with, with me being Italian, I got to see a lot of the countryside of, of Italy. And uh, being Catholic, I got to see uh, the tombs in Israel. And um, I actually seen the Pope in Italy at a mass that we went to. Um, England was fantastic because I got to see the change of parliament, which is like a rare thing for, you know, people in the United States to uh, witness. Yes. And uh, it was just, uh, it was overwhelming as a youngster. Yeah, I but you But you look at it now and it's like, you know, we were taught in high school and grade school one thing, but when you see it in reality, it, it's a totally different picture. I bet. So before you got deployed and you started traveling, can you tell me a little bit about your experience during basic training? Oh, basic training was a wake up call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basic training was a wake up call. As, as a youngster, I, I loved my sleep. In the Navy, um, I left for boot camp at three o'clock Pittsburgh time. Didn't get to the um, Great Lakes until probably three in the morning. Bef and then we, we processed and we got to sleep from four o'clock in the morning till five. And, and it is funny because, you know, you see movies of them with boot camps and they use the trash can to wake you up. Well, that's that's true reality. And I'm like, um, and if you didn't get up, he made sure you got up. So it was like, okay, I'm not at home anymore. <laughs> but just meeting people from all over the United States, and it's just, it's a culture shock because, you know, there was a gentleman from Arkansas. He didn't know how to tie shoes. Oh, yeah. And basically, when you're in the military, it's a team thing. So everything everything we did in boot camp was a team thing. If, if one guy fell short in one area, you're there to help him pick up and learn and progress. So, you know, me, I couldn't tie a tie to save my soul. And another guy knew how to tie a tie, but I could shine shoes and somebody else couldn't shine shoes. So it was basically, we all worked as a team to reach the ultimate goal of passing inspections, making a bed. Yes, we had to learn how to make a bed. And, and they did bounce a quarter off it. So yes, there it's, it's very, very disciplined, very structured. You know, it's not like you're in high school anymore where you could just get up and your bed's not made. You know, you know how it is yeah, yeah. being a kid, but uh, very structured. And it's like, you know, you lay there in bed at night when, you know, the lights out. And that's the other thing, too. Back in our day, there was no cell phones. And, you know, you weren't allowed to call home anytime you wanted to. So you got you got a little homesick at first and, you know, you kind of miss things and you lay in bed at night thinking, what the heck did I just get myself into? <laughs> but as you progress, you feel yourself getting more motivated and stronger and but just meeting people from across the country alone was a culture shock i mean there was guys from arkansas texas um, maine um there was quite a few from the east coast but like deep in arkansas utah arizona and everybody had their own way of doing things 
So you kind of had to adapt everybody. You can't just say, well, I'm not doing that. You know, and, you know, there were, were some confrontations because of the way people were brought up and how to do things. So we had to overcome that as a team to get to the ultimate goal. Now, I will say we started John, they had what they call competitions between different uh, companies. And like, you know, it was book smart stuff about um, how you grade it on book smart, um, tying Navy knots, um, the athletics. And out of 15 flags, we got 13. So we, we kind of gelled really well together. That's great. And I was, the hardest thing for me to get was marching in cadence. Everybody marching the same at the same time. I, I had a real hard time with that because I'm left. I'm a lefty. <laughs> I'm a lefty too. There you go. Yeah. But, you know, and then sometimes we would practice. We had like an hour to write letters, do personal things like in the evening if our company commander didn't think we needed to run PT because somebody forgot to tie their shoe or mm. whatever, but we would work on things together as a team to, you know, make sure everybody graduates together. Everybody stays together and we accomplish the ultimate goal of graduating. But, um, it was, it was stressful at times. I won't lie as a youngster. It was, you know, I look back at it now and I laugh at it. But it's all necessary. It's all part of what they do is they tear you down to where you're starting your life all over again. You basically, when you walk in, when you walk in that barracks, when you walk on the Great Lakes boot camp, being a kid, you must it, it gets put in a box and it gets put on a shelf. And they train you from from day one how to be a, a soldier, sailor. I mean, it, it basically in all branches of the service, they do they do the same thing to get you molded to be at, for me, it would be in the fleet. The army would be, you know, out in the trenches. Each branch of the service has their own way of uh, preparing the soldier, sailor, Marine to do what, what jobs they need to do. We had to learn how to swim. There's people that didn't know how to swim. We had to jump off a 40 foot platform and, and we had to float in the water. Now, see, I like the water, so that wasn't a problem for me. But it was like you're, you're looking at people thinking, what do you mean you don't know how to swim? But here again, they're from Arkansas. So, I mean, you know, they have swamps and stuff. Now, me, I would go in a swamp. But it, just swapping stories to a family life, things you did, you know, different sports teams. But it was more more for me. I learned about people's backgrounds and, and their heritage and in, in their homes. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, boot camp, boot camp was an eye opening experience. And, you know, like I say, back then it was kind of scary and you, you, you were always afraid to screw up because they had this thing. If you screwed up, you had to go to this. It's a, it's basically like you're being punished. So you get to go exercise and they make you do things very, very hard, very, very long. So you never wanted to screw up, but everybody in the, in our company, had to go there at least once. So we were all there. It's basically, it's, it's, and it's to teach you discipline, attention to detail. Attention to detail on the military is very, very important because I mean, most of us between 18 and 20 years old, we're gonna go in the fleet where we're on aircraft carriers. I don't, I don't know if you can see the aircraft carrier behind me. Oh yeah, cool. Is that boat? significant to you yes that that is not a boat oh, it's an that, that is, yes sorry that, i couldn't no there well you know what you're you're not alone because there's you know that's the argument between services an army guy will say that's a boat and to us navy guys that's an aircraft carrier a boat's what you go fishing off of <laughs> but um but in in reality when we all graduated boot camp they were handing out assignments and they said, Bob, you're going to the USS John F. Kennedy aircraft carrier. You're going to be an ordinance man. Cause I went in undesignated cause some guys come in and they had a plan. They had a designation. I didn't care where I went. You know, we got to pick three different, like the boot camps. We got to pick three different areas. And at the end of the day, the Navy picked where you went. 
but um, I went to the uh, John F. Kennedy. It was in dry dock at the time, getting rehabbed. I I got out of the cab after you know getting off the airplane, and, and they drove me to the base. And as you as you get to the gate and you show them your orders, because there's you have orders that you get. Right in front of me was the John F. Kennedy. I just looked up at it and I'm like, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? I mean, it's huge. This aircraft carrier fully, fully the when we go into deployment can hold 5,000 sailors. Oh man. And uh, quite a number of airplanes, quite a number of helicopters. And uh, it, it's very huge. And it was very, I was very overwhelmed. Very overwhelmed because it's like, it's so huge. My first thought is I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get in trouble. And a first class was looking, he, he walked by me and he says, son, you, he go, well, he didn't say son, he said, sailor, he says, you look troubled. I says, I joined the Navy to go on this. And I was like freaking out. And he's like, <laughs> he says, within a week, he says, you'll know where all the all the good places are. Like, oh, because there's four different chow halls for the enlisted. There's little grocery stores. Um, and there's, you know, different mess decks that serve different kind of foods. So it was, it was overwhelming. And like I said, you know, and the birthing. The birthing in the carriers, and, and, and basically all in the Navy, it's not like you have your own bedroom. There, you don't have a bedroom. You have uh, what they call coffin locker. It's very small, and you only have like maybe fifteen inches between you and the next guy. They're stacked three high, so you you know you would think of a normal bunk bed. They were they were smaller than a normal bunk bed. And you had to birth with guys that you didn't know, and you all had to readapt again from boot camp now to being in the real Navy. Yeah. So you're in a, and this birthing area had 85 people in it. And, and yeah, think of, think of the oversized bedroom with 85 people sleeping. They had a little TV area that you can watch TV, but that's it. There was nothing else to do. You know, so back and like back in our day, we didn't have the video games. Um, so our time was spent, you know, when we, when we were out of sea, we would walk outside, watch the planes fly in and out. Um, look at the the ocean view is like none, none that, you know, it, it's just so different. People go on vacation and they see it from the beach. Try being out in the middle of the ocean, out in the Mediterranean Sea in the dark of night where all you see is stars. That sounds beautiful. So, I mean, it's it's just a, uh, the, the whole concept of it, like when the first time I went out to see, I was just so in awe about everything. And, you know, I didn't start questioning why I joined anymore. It was like, wow, this is getting to be pretty cool. I'm, you know, you because first time you watch an airplane land on, on a aircraft carrier, it's like, oh my gosh. It's like stunning, but you know, you get used to it. And it's like, the thing to do was, okay, they had flight ops, F-14s are flying and taking off. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they'll do practice runs with bombs and weapons on them. So you basically say, hey, I, I built those, but you're, you're, you're boasting about the bombs on the planes that you built that's taken off. So, but yeah, it's, uh, I can go on and on and on. As, as, as most people know, sailors can tell some long stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's good. That's, you know, what we're here for. Um, for where was the first uh, place that you landed um, on that aircraft carrier? Uh, is like, where was the first uh, place you were deployed to? Oh, the first place I reported to was the weapons office. And actually, they call you up to, they have a little landing area where you check in and report aboard. And they call the appropriate um, division or, or um, department to come and pick you up. Okay. And I basically went during Thanksgiving. So there was nobody. Basically, it was duty section. They have what they call duty section where they man the boat, maintain the ship while everybody else is off on liberty or on leave. So my first 
my first, I, I ended up going to the birthing because he says nobody's in the weapons department because I got there like around seven o'clock at night. So I basically got to watch guys play cards and they, you know, they were trying to hustle me to play cards <laughs> for money. And I'm like, uh, I don't think so. Not today. But um, I ended up going to the birthing and just hanging out and like for a week because it was during Thanksgiving, I basically just, you know, went to muster. Muster means they make sure you're accounted for and they make sure everybody that was on duty is still on the ship. Um, and I just did, like I sat, I sat in the weapons, um, weapons office called uh, G3. It's where the G3 is like the bomb assembly crew people. And there's uh, different divisions within the weapons department. There's G3 who builds the bombs, there's G2 that does maintenance to things. Um, G5 is flight deck people. G4 is like weapons admin. But yeah, there's each part. And I started out in, in the bomb buildup, but I ended up, you know, be, before I left, I ended up in um, G4, which is weapons admin. And I, I took care of inventory and logistics. Did you like that job? Loved it. It was... Uh, and and if you ask any sailor that you know uh, was in weapons, they'll say G four was like uh, you know you were taught you were the best because they don't take just anybody. You know G three is like that's where they throw everybody that's new, okay. and then depending on how you do in G three, then like the weapons officers and stuff get together and they start picking people to pull. For different areas because as you're common somebody else is leaving you they're either going to another duty station or they're getting out of this service altogether so i did really well with inventory you know within the weapons you know the bomb buildup team because you still had to keep um accurate account of all the weapons and all the stuff that goes with them and i seen that because uh, they had an issue with keeping inventory straight and i went and inventoried all kind of stuff me and another shipmate and we, I went to weapons logistics and he went to flight tech because he wanted to, he wanted to work on the flight tech. So he got his choice and I ended up going where I stayed there the rest of my uh, Navy career and loved it. So, what was but your yeah, day -to -day that's day -to -day sort of like, what's that my day to day? Yeah. Like your day to day tasks and things that you would need to do. With that. Well, in, in port is kind of boring. It's like a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. um, basically all you're doing is you're doing housekeeping you know the navy is very big on housekeeping keeping things clean everything's got and you got inspected every friday and the, and the key is on fridays when you get inspected if you failed you you didn't get to go on liberty right away because you had to fix all the discrepancies but you know when you're out of sea you work 12 on 12 off and sometimes you worked longer than that, um, but you would go through and like with me, generally speaking, we the G3 would do bomb buildups and they would send the stuff through the different departments up to the flight deck and then the, the air wing ordinance people would hook it to the planes and my job for me was to keep track of which plane it was on, you know, who's the, who's the pilot, you know, it's basically like a crime scene. You know, it, it, it starts here, it gets signed off here. The next person that gets it, he signs off here. Then the guys that loaded, they signed off it. They pulled the pins and everything. And then it's just reversed. When the plane comes back, it, if the plane comes back and it wasn't able to shoot its ordinance, it's just a reversal. It starts from the, um, the squadrons to the flight deck crew, to the hangar bay crew, and you tear it all back down again, and you pack it all back up again. And, and you know, like I said, basically.